what we're going to talk about, air brakes is probably one of the um, most, I guess, technical uh, chapters that there is. So what I like to do, I always like to go over it um, and kind of break it down for you guys to make sure everybody's on the same page. Sounds good? Good. We're also going to film it, so and then I don't have to keep saying this all over the, all, all the time. Okay. So on that sheet that you see there, you see something like this. First thing we're going to talk about that I want you guys to write down on that sheet is this. Air equals move, no air equals no move. Simply what that means is when you have air in your system, your vehicle can move. When you have no air in your system, your vehicle cannot move. Okay. Now, air brakes. First question for you guys is, why do trucks use air brakes versus hydraulic brakes like cars? Air brakes are stronger than hydraulic brakes. Air brakes are stronger. Okay, good. Anything else? Cheaper to use air over oil. Air is a lot cheaper than oil. What's lighter? Air is lighter. What's easier to clean up? Air. What would you rather clean up, air or oil? Air. Air, all right, good. So, that being said, the air is, uh, there's a lot of reasons why we use air into holding these things, right? The only thing oil has over air is the precision. So oil is a little bit more precise than air is. But when it comes to stopping 80,000 pounds, you need more force and you need precision. Agreed? Good. So we're gonna, we're gonna understand exactly why and how strong air is, all right? So, first question. Air compressor, what's the job of the air compressor? To build air. To build air? It makes air? To contain air, makes to compress air. air. To compress air to where? To the tank. To the air tank, good. So the air compressor's job is just to pump air from the atmosphere into the air tank, okay? Now, what's the governor's job? Of what? Of the air compressor. Of the air compressor. So what I want you guys to think of, the governor is the boss of the air compressor, or your wives at home. So it tells you when to work, when not to work. Turn on, turn off. So it's like an on or off switch, right? On, off. It never says work faster or work slower, it just says turn on or turn off. Understood? Good. Okay. Now, when does the governor know when to shut the air off? Good, so once the air tank is full, right? How does the governor know when to tell the air compressor to shut off? When it reaches 120, that's the correct answer, but how is the governor is attached to the air gauge? So this circle over here is your air gauge. The air gauge is on your dashboard inside the truck, okay? The air gauge, write this down, only reads the air that's inside of the air tank. After the air has left the air tank, it no longer reads that air. Once it's left? After the air has left the air tank, mm -hmm. so say from the air tank it goes into the truck itself, right. it's not reading on the air gauge. Okay. okay, so the air gauge only reads what's inside the air tank only. Okay, so there's a few numbers to memorize when it comes to the air gauge. We're going to have 120 psi. What happens at 120 psi? The governor cuts, uh, cuts off the air. The governor cuts off the air. Why? Because the air tank is full. full. So when the air tank is full, the governor says, hey, shut off. No need to work anymore. We got enough air. You also hear that sneeze as well, right? That's, that's a pressure release valve on the tank itself. And then you'll hear a sneeze of air coming out, and that's how you know that the air tank is full. Okay? Now, at 100 psi, what happens? The governor cuts in. The governor cuts in. Hey, we need more air. Turn on. Make sense? So it's, read, it's reading the gauge. Once it reaches 100, we need more air. Turn on to put more air back on. Make sense? Now, my question to you guys is, what happens at 110? Is the air compressor on or off? How many people think it's on? 
Okay, how many people think it's off? Good, so two on, two off. You guys are all right, and you guys are all wrong. Let's explain why. Okay. <laughs> so, as the air pressure is building, right, and it's, th it's at 110, is the air compressor going to be on or off? On until it hits? 120. On its way back down, stay it stops at 110, is it going to be on or off? Off until it hits? 100. And it refills. At 100, that's when it turns back on. So say for whatever reason you guys turn on a truck and it's at 110 psi, and you're giving it gas to make the RPMs uh, to make the air compressor build up, but it's not building up. In most cases, it's because you haven't reached 100 yet. So you don't have a bad air compressor; you just didn't go low enough. Does that make sense? Good. Okay. The next thing to know is 60 psi. What happens at 60 psi? It's when the buzzer and the lights on. Buzzer and light. What's it called? Low air warning or low pressure warning light. Why is that important? Because what happens when we have no air? No move. No move. Locks up. Locks up. And then the last set of numbers is 40 to 20. What should happen between 40 and 20? The brakes will lock. The brakes will lock. That means you have no air and that means you currently cannot move. Make sense? Any questions on this stuff so far? So, what happens at 120? Governor cuts off. What happens at 100? Cuts on. Cuts back on. 60? Buzzer sounds. Buzzer sounds. What's it warning you of? Low air. And at 40 to 20? Locks. Locks up. Okay. So, um, that's good. Next question. How do we lose air? How in the world can we get from 120 all the way down to 60? Air leak is one. Regular braking. Braking. So there's only two ways you can lose air. You either have an air leak, which means that the air is escaping faster than the air compressor is pushing it in, right? Or you're pressing on the brake ex excessively. Because every time you press on the brake a lot, you're going to lose your air pressure. Those are the only two reasons why you lose air. Okay? And again, if you're losing air, the air compressor is constantly pumping more air in, which means you, you'd be losing more than what you're gaining. Understood? Any questions? Good. Okay, now let's go into PSI. All this talk about PSI. PSI, what does that stand for? Pounds per square inch. Pounds per square inch. What does that mean? If you were to explain that to a five year old or to a 10 year old. Not, not air wise, just pounds per square inch. Pressure. How much pressure? Okay, let me kind of give you guys a visual. On your paper, you guys have a little box that looks like this, right? Okay, so that's one square inch. That's an inch by an inch by an inch by an inch. So if you guys would take out your palm, look at your palm, and imagine a square inch on here. Okay, now at 120 psi, or let's say this, at one psi, that little box would weigh one pound. How heavy would that box be at 120 psi? 120 pounds. Imagine squeezing 120 pounds in that little surface area, one square inch on your palm. Can you lift up 120 pounds, one hand? All right, so then you can, I can. Good. So to kind of give you guys a visual, can you guys put 120 pounds of oil into this little square inch box? No. And that's why we use air, because air is a lot stronger because we can compress it a lot more. All right, so that's one reason why. To kind of give you guys a visual, Mr. Trainer, how heavy are, is like a normal plate, a big plate? 45. 45 pounds. You guys been to the gym before, yes? You guys know what a 45 pound plate is. How many plates do we need to get to 120? Two points up. Two. Oh, I don't know what's going to One, two, plus the bar. So two plus the bar. So you're going to have 45. 45, and what do you got over here? Bar. 45 is the bar too? Okay. That equals what? 120? 135. So a little bit more. Imagine squeezing all that weight and holding it right in the palm of your hand in one square inch. That's how much weight we're talking about when we're talking about air pressure at 120 psi. 
to stop 80,000 pounds. So t when you put that visual in, right, pick up a whole uh, one 40-pound plate on each side plus the, plus the bar, squeeze it all down, it's a lot of power. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Me neither. <laughs> That's why you're in school. All right, good. So, uh, any questions so far? All right. Next part is we're going to talk about there's two brake systems. I want you to write this down. You're going to have the emergency brake system. And then you're going to have the service. The emergency brakes have three different names to them, but they have to deal with the same part of the system. Emergency brakes, also going to have uh, parking brakes, also going to have uh, spring brakes. And then service, you'll either hear service or foot brake. So you got that? How many names to the emergency system? Three. Three. What are they? Emergency brake, parking brake, swing brake. Good. Okay. So, the next thing that I drew over here, this is called a brake chamber. Now, the brake chambers are going to be found, and when we go into the yard, we're going to show you exactly what the brake chambers look like, but they're going to be found on every set of tires. So, on this trailer, it would have four brake chambers. On this truck, there would have what? Six brake chambers. Okay, so every set of tires has a brake chamber. A brake chamber, in this case a dual brake chamber, consists of both, uh, both uh, brake, brake systems. Okay? First thing we're going to talk about is the emergency brake system, which is this bottom part right here. Now, the reason why they call it spring brakes is because this squirrely thing over here, that's an actual spring. They actually put a spring inside this part of the chamber here. So that's why they call it spring brakes. Okay? Now, the reason why they call it parking brakes, you guys know the two knobs on the dashboard, right? You got the diamond and then you got the octagon. And then you got the diamond one. Right? The yellow and the red. Okay? One's for the tractor, one's for the trailer. If you're going for a class B, you're only going to have one. You're only going to have the yellow, right? Because that's only for the tractor. The red's for the trailer. Okay? So they call it parking brakes because you can control when the air goes inside here. Okay, why is that important? How does this work? When you push into these parking brakes, you're actually releasing your parking brakes. You're forcing air into the emergency chamber. The air is then going to push the spring down. That means you have air in the system the spring is pushed down, which means the brakes are released, and now that means you can move. When you pull these parking brakes out, you're taking the air out of this chamber. The spring is going to do what? Push up. Push up, and the brakes are going to lock, right? Get applied. That means you have no air, which means you cannot move, all right? So when the air is here, it's going to push down on the spring, the spring is then going to be released, and the brakes are now released, and you can roll. When the air is out, the spring is going to push up, rock right up. It's going to lock the brakes, and the brakes are locked. You cannot move. Follow me so far? Good. So that's why they call it parking brakes, because we can control when the air goes in or when the air goes out. So if I say release your parking brakes, are you going to push in or pull out? Push in. Push in. Push in. If I say apply your parking brakes, Pull out, because you want to take the air out and the spring to go up. Now, why do they call it emergency brakes? In case of an emergency, do you want to stop or not stop? Stop. Stop. Okay. That being said, if an emergency, in this case, say you have an air leak, so one of the hoses are busted, and air is coming out, 
You want to be able to stop, yes? Yes. So that means the air is going to come out of the chamber by itself, and what's going to happen to the spring? It's going to pop up. And what's going to happen to your brakes? Lock up. That's why I call it emergency brakes. So in case of emergency, and you have an air leak, the spring will automatically pop up, and then your brakes lock up. Make sense? So they call it spring brake because there is a spring. spring. They call it parking brakes because we can we can control the air going in with the parking valves. And they call it emergency brakes because in case of emergency we want to stop. Good. Any questions? My next question. I, well, the way I want you to think about it is it's a constant battle between the spring and the air. Okay? Um, at what PSI is the spring stronger than the air? 120. At 120, what happens? You can move. The, uh, you can move. So that means is the spring up or down? It's down. It's down. So is the spring stronger if it's down? So at 40 PSI, between 20 and 40. Good. So between 20 and 40 PSI, that's when the brakes lock up. That's when the uh, the spring is actually stronger than the, air. than the air. So it'll actually beat the air up and then it'll lock up. Anything above 40, you start, the, is the air is stronger, oh, the air is stronger to push down the spring. Right? Does that make sense? If the spring is down, can you move? If the spring is up, can you move? Good. What pushes down the spring? What applies the brakes? The spring. That's going to be a question on the test. So what apply, what, um, what releases the brakes? Air, air. Air, what applies the brakes? Spring. And this has to do with the emergency system only. Okay? Now, in the same chamber, we all, any questions on the emergency system before we move forward? On the same chamber, we're going to have this top part, which is the service chamber. Okay? The service chamber has to do with your foot brake. It works a little bit different. It's a completely separate system, so I never want you guys to think that it has anything to do with another. There's always two separate hoses going to them, okay? Um, so one hose is always going into the emergency system, a completely separate hose is going into the service brake system, okay? The way this works, you're inside your cab, and you press on your foot brake, you push on your foot brake. Air is then going to get pushed in to this chamber. This bar over here is called a push rod, okay? When air comes in, it's then going to push the push rod up, which is going to apply your brakes, okay? So when you press on the brake, it's going to push up your push rod, and that's going to apply your brakes. When you let go of the foot brake, air is going to come out, and the push rod is going to go down, which means your service brakes are released, okay? So when's the only time air goes inside this chamber? When you press on your foot brake. When you press on the foot brake, it pushes the push rod up, and that's what actually locks your brakes from moving. Any questions so far? All right, so we have both systems, yes? Ready to move on? Ready. Good. Last part. You guys to draw this chart. Uh, we're going to put uh, service and then emergency and then on the top we're going to do three columns. We're going to have drive, park, and then stop. Okay. So the, what we're going to do now is we're going to see if there's air inside the system, inside that certain system at a certain point. The question is going to go like this. If you're driving down the road, are you going to have air in your service system, yes or no? Yes. You say yes, what do you say? I say yes. You say no, you say yes, yes. what do you say? No. So if you're driving down the road, are you going to have air in the service system? Why did you say yes? Uh, to air, don't we need air to keep the truck moving? In the service system, do you need air? Which one's the service brakes? No, so you don't need, right, so you don't need air. Right. Because when's the only time air goes inside here? When you hit the brakes. Hit the brake. So are you pressing on the brake when you're driving? No. no. So no air. 
I down no air. Okay. Now, as you're driving down the road, do you need air inside the emergency system? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why? To keep the pressure Good. Because you need air to push down the Springs. spring. Now, if you're parked for the night, are you going to have air inside your service system? Yes or no? No. You say no. What do you say? No. You say no? I say no. No? No. You say no. Correct. No. Why? Because you're not pushing the brakes. Not using. Good. So you're not pushing on the foot brake unless you're staying in the truck all night to put your foot on the brake. You don't need it. Now, do you have air inside the emergency system when you're parked? No. No. Why? Because the spring is up, so that means no air. Good. Okay. Now, when you're stopped at a stop sign, do you have air inside the service system? Yes. Why? Good, because you're pressing on the brake. Do you have air inside the emergency system when you're stopped at a stop sign? Yes. You say yes? What do you say? No. You say no? What do you say? Yes? What do you say? I say yes. You say yes. All right. So the correct answer is yes. Explain it to us why. You said the uh, emergency, emergency uh, system. If the springs go up. If the springs no up. Springs, actually, when it's air in. The springs are down. Good. But you're stopped at a stop sign. At a stop sign. So that means the brake, the, the, the springs are up, right? Because you're using the brakes. If the spring is up, then that means you answered incorrectly. Because if the spring is up, that means there is no... There's no air in So why... So you got a stop sign. Yep. Well, you wouldn't need to use your emergency brakes for the stop sign. Good. So when you're stopped at a stop sign, you guys don't apply the parking brakes, do you? No. You just use your... Foot brake. So if the parking brakes are still released, and then you don't have to worry about that. Right. right? Kind of like the emergency brake in your car. When you pull it out, that's applying the emergency brake, right? When you push it down, it's releasing. So that's if you're stopped at a stop sign, do you uh, pull up the emergency brake? No. Same kind of system. Same kind of methodology. Gotcha. Okay. That means you guessed. No, not you, really. You got right. <laughs> nah, nah. I understood. I just didn't know how to break it down. You know understood. I mean? Makes sense. Right. Okay. Any questions? I would like for you to repeat the. Uh, if we had a stop sign. If you had a stop sign. Using the um, emergency brakes is uh, pulling out the. Uh, the parking brakes. The parking brakes, which we not. We don't need to. Unless it's a really cute girl and you want to talk to her. Right, 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 right. And then you don't need to. Right, right. Huh? I got you. Make sense? Yeah. So it's still air. It's still air because the spring is stood down. Because right. as soon as you come off the foot brake, what are you going to do? You're going to start moving. So that means the rod. Push rod is going to come down because the air is going to come out. Okay. But in order to move, the spring has to be what? The spring has to be down with the air in it. Gotcha. Make sense? Yeah. Good. Any other questions? No? Don't use your brake, emergency brakes at a stop sign. <laughs> Correct. That's what you learned today. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. So that's pretty much the air brake system. Did that help kind of clarify things? No, no, it did. A lot. A lot. Good. Very good.